Hello and welcome to another video. In this one I want to talk about type aliases for Python typing uh, and how you can use them to maybe shorten your code or make it a little bit easier to understand uh, what's going on with your types. Um, so let's jump into it. So sometimes I find that types can get a little bit lengthy and um, you know, are, are hard to type out over and over and over. And sometimes you lose the meaning of the types, especially when I have like largely nested things so like tuples inside lists, inside dictionaries or stuff like that. Um, I tried to search for some examples in some of my code. I actually didn't find any really good ones. So we're going to be looking at a not so good one today um, where uh, this is a AST visitor in Flake 8 typing imports, which is a linter for typing. I guess it's a little bit meta. Um, and you'll notice in this class that I have a lot of these things that are that contain this tuple int int, and I'm repeating that over and over and over. Um, and at a glance, it's not really clear what that tuple int int actually represents. Now, I know because I wrote this code <laughs> what, it, what it actually means. Uh, this, this is a pair that's referring to the line number and the column number of a particular thing that's found. Uh, such that it can later be created or turned into a flake eight error message. Uh, but, I, you know, you might find that repeating tuple int int over and over is a little bit cumbersome. And so what you can do is you can define an alias uh, that you can use to then substitute into this position here. And aliases can be defined either at the module scope or in class scopes. Um, I usually prefer to do them at the module scope just because it, you know, it, the, the tooling seems to work a little bit better if they are there. Um, and then you don't have to deal with as many scoping problems and other stuff like that. Um, but in this case, uh, we might represent this tuple int int as maybe a new type called line call. And uh, type aliases are just done with normal assignments. So you do just an assignment here. And now I can use this name anywhere that I had tuple int int before. And my pie will, you know, follow that, uh, follow that type alias, and so I could do this instead, and even down here we're dealing again with tuple int int, and um, and now the type checker is going to treat this as the same exact thing as this. And so you might think, okay, cool, well that's that's a little bit shorter. When should I use this when, versus when should I not? And that's kind of the tricky part here. Like, you want to you wanna be very careful about not overusing aliases, because sometimes it can reduce readability. Uh, like, you now have to say, oh, well, what the heck is line call? Uh, find the alias for it. Oh, it's a peer. It's a two two length tuple of integers. Oh, okay, I'll mentally substitute that in my head. So it's you know there's a little bit of cognitive overhead here. Um, I usually my rule of thumb is usually like if it causes one if it causes the line to be too long, I'll probably switch to an alias. Uh, or if I have like two or three um, things inside of it and the alias improves readability, like it's easier to understand. Uh, the other is if the type inside is an opaque type, like I don't really care about its actual values. Um, I'm just passing it around to a bunch of places. I'll often reach for an alias there. Like one common place is I have a really, really long callable type, which represents some sort of callback. Um, and I might pass that callback around to a bunch of places. I don't, I don't really care about the exact signature of that callback until I actually need to call it. Uh, but intermediate variables might benefit from having an alias there. One other thing that I wanted to cover here with aliases is you can also make them generic. Um, although the genericism is a little bit limited, I've actually I've run into a bunch of bugs with it, so I'm not sure if I'm using it incorrectly or not. Um, I, have, I don't have any examples of this that work. I have some examples that are buggy in my code, but we'll, we'll come up with a different example here. Um, and in order to work with generics, again, I need to do a very, uh, video on generics, but we're just going to do from typing import tuple, and we're also going to import type var. And type variables are how you make a generic. Um, so if you've worked in a language like Java or C Sharp or even C++ to an extent, although templates are different than generics, but you can kind of think of them similarly, uh, you might be familiar with something like this. Uh, but you can actually make a alias. So let's say we made an alias that's uh, vector3 for a three-dimensional vector which is a tuple of three integer-like things. Uh, we might actually say, you know, this is bound down, bound to float or something. Um, but again, that would be more complicated generic stuff. So we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Um, and maybe you are making a vector that's just supposed to be, uh, you know, from one scalar to a new vector. So you might make a 
make vec 3d function uh, which takes a scalar as an as a type <laughs> this could be int or float or whatever um, and returns a vector 3. Now note uh, without the type annotation here this will not have these type variables substituted so this will just be vector 3 any 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 uh, so you have to make sure to substitute those type variables by saying what type you expect here. Now in this case uh, we're reusing the same t as this t here uh, but you might imagine like make vec 3d int that takes an int and returns a vector 3 of int like that. Um, let's actually make sure that this this works because <laughs> uh, I don't want to mislead you in a video that would be that would be not great. Uh, let's do virtual vm and pip install mypy. And if we run mypy on t.py, oh, do we get a new version of mypy? Oh no, we're still on 790. Uh, cool, you'll see that we get no, no errors there. And what if we do make vec generic? Uh, oh, we should also do reveal type make vec 3d int 2 just so that my can show us what that is. Healer t, vector 3t, turn t, t. Or sorry, not t, t, t. Scalar, scalar, scalar. That is a very difficult word to type repeatedly for some reason. Okay, cool. So, and if we do reveal type make vec generic, uh, let's do a floating point number, 15.0. We should get tuple float float float. Cool, awesome. Yeah, so that's that's how you can use generic type aliases. Uh, but anyway, that's that's type aliases. Hopefully, this was useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.